This work from OpenAI shows how complex skills and strategies can emerge naturally from self play and through competition and cooperation in a multi agent environment. The game the player has to play is hide and seek, where one team has to seek another one that tries to hide from them. To keep things interesting, the environment has walls, ramps and blocks that the players can use to accomplish their mission. But to remain competitive and beat the other team, the players must continually adapt and improve. In this way, a new curricula emerge, and new innovation arise from it. At first, the players learn to run and chase. Then the hiders learn to build forts. To get over the blocks used to build the fort, the seekers learn to use the ramp. But the evolution doesn't end here, no. The hiders break this strategy by locking the ramp before the seekers can use them. Smart idea. Game over? No. An unexpected strategy emerged from the game. The seekers discover that they can use a locked ramp to jump on the block, surf on it and jump into the hider shelter. Conversely, the hiders, to keep their advantage on the opponents, learn the ultimate strategy. Lock all the blocks and ramps. Now, the most important point of the paper is not showing that the players can devise great strategies, but that they can do it in a sort of unsupervised way. In the paper, the authors want to show that through competition and cooperation in a dynamic environment, innovation can arise. Continued innovation is extremely difficult to achieve, but few simple ideas can give rise to it. First, the environment has to be at some level open and adaptive, whereas the current environments used in research are pretty much fixed and innovations are bound to it. But that's not enough. We don't want to engineer a large number of environments to support every new innovation. So the second ingredient is an environment that can support multi-agents, such that the innovation of an agent or a species determines the environment to which the other must adapt. The pressure for adaptation to the new changes creates a race that may give rise to continued and endless advancements and improvements of the agents. This is an autocurricula, a curricula that naturally emerge from the dynamicity of the environment brought by the other units. These two ingredients are necessary but maybe not sufficient to the autocurricula, but in the case of capture the flag it worked. Note that an autocurricula can arise at multiple levels of compositionality, from the minimal unit level to the cultural or societal level. But this may be a topic for another video. As we saw in the paper they set up a simple objective, to play a two-team hide and seek game in an environment with simple objects that the agents can grab and lock in place. The rooms are randomly generated and at the beginning of each game there's a preparation phase in which the seekers are immobilized so that the hiders can run and change their environment. The reward that the agents are given is based on the team performance so that cooperation may naturally emerge from units of the same team. A negative reward is given to the hiders if one of them is seen by the seekers and the opposite otherwise. To the seekers are given the opposite reward. Simple as that. The agents observe position, velocity and size of the objects and that of the other agents if these are in the proximity. Agents also have a sensor similar to LiDAR. The agents are trained using self-pay to improve the rate of learning and to keep the level of the two teams always similar. The agents are trained with PPO, Proximal Policy Optimization, that is a model-free algorithm based on policy gradient. PPO is one of the most popular reinforcement learning algorithms for its performance and simplicity. 
In particular, PPO has two networks, an actor network or policy network that produces a distribution over the actions, and a critic network that estimates the action values given a state and an action. This is the architecture of the policy network. You can see that the network is egocentric in the sense that it distinguishes the self from the other entities like agents and objects. The LiDAR observation and the position of the agent are embedded together via a 1D convolutional layer. Also, each entity is embedded with a fully connected layer shared with the other entities of the same category. Then all the embeddings are passed through a residual tension block, averaged and concatenated to the agent self representation. Then the entities not observed by the agents are maxed away through a self attention block so that the agent can make decision based only on the entities it sees. The final representation is then passed through a LSTM that outputs the distribution of the over the actions. In this way, at execution time, each agent acts only based on its own observation and memory state. Instead, during optimization, the algorithm uses a omniscient value function for each agent that has access to the full state of the environment. Thus, during optimization, the information is not masked. This simple architecture combined with a few mobile objects, a multi-agent environment and a simple objective was enough to the emergence of the skills that went beyond what the designer thought. In addition, the two teams developed cooperation skills and strategies for an efficient division of labor. These skills and strategies are quite impressive, but are they transferable to other tasks? This is an important question, because if it does, we can use this self-play in a multi-agent environment method to learn features and skills as a sort of pre-training to then fine-tune a set of dancing tasks. It would act as an exploration strategy method. To answer it, has been proposed five tasks to test the agents on. The tasks are grouped in two categories, cognition and memory tasks that comprehend object counting, lock and return and sequential lock. And the second category is manipulation tasks that include the task of construction from blueprint and shelter construction. On each of these tasks, three policies are trained one pre-trained in hide and seek one trained from scratch, and one pre-trained with a count-based intrinsic motivation method. You can see that though the policy pre-trained in hide and seek is almost always the best one, it doesn't outperform in every situation. It neither leads to faster convergence, nor improves the overall performance at least when compared to the policy pre-trained with an intrinsic motivation objective. This means that the agent skills representations are entangled and difficult to transfer and fine-tune. As highlighted in the paper, and Fla and Clean seems a good explanation of it, they believe that the cause behind the better results in some tasks of the policy pre-trained in hide and seek may derive from the learned feature representation, and unfortunately not from the reuse of skills. This area needs further research, but this is a first milestone in the direction of the development of systems that produces autocurricula. Great, that's everything. If you liked the content, let me know in the comments below and click the like button. I'm Andrea and see you soon. Bye.